Welcome HBAR family. We're going to dive into some Hedera Hashgraph news. There's some great developments going on, such as Hedera partnering with Deloitte. We're going to look into that. Also, Swirl Labs changes its name to Hashgraph. And also, I'm going to play a clip from an interview that you're not going to want to miss. It's Ty Smith from Hedera. He explains more about the network, tokenization of real-world assets, and some features such as Karate Combat on Hedera. So if you're a Hedera fan, you come to the right spot. Please hit the like, subscribe, and share with friends and family. Let's dive in. Now, if you're serious about purchasing a hardware wallet, in the description are links for an amazing discount. I'm Eric Piccini, and I'm here to share some really exciting news. Four of Labs is changing its name to Hashgraph. Value creation comes from having a thriving ecosystem of builders who are developing decentralized apps on top of the Hedera network. The ethos of a public network is that it should evolve and grow on its own over time and not be steered by a select group of a few people. So for that reason, in May of 2022, we left Hedera, Lehman and I, to found Swirls Labs. And we did this with the explicit goal of establishing a standalone company that would not only support the Hedera Network's software development, but also contribute independently to the Hedera ecosystem with new products that use and are complementary to the Hedera Network and the ecosystem. I'm excited about this name change. This is cool. So Hashgraph is a word the world knows. The Hashgraph consensus algorithm, I remember at the very first hackathon, we passed out t-shirts that said, what is Hashgraph? And people now know. Everybody knows what Hashgraph is. And I love that we're going full circle to make our name be Hashgraph. And really what we're talking about is recovering the original vision of shared worlds. The idea is that there isn't just one ledger. There's a million different little shared worlds and anyone can wave their hand and carve out a piece of cyberspace and create their little shared world that's private. But then they all link to each other and to the public ledger and that we are able then to talk back and forth. And so this shows why things like bridges will be very important. It's critical that we be able to create these ledgers. You can create a ledger that's private. It's only in one country, only run by certain types of people. And then you can have Hedera is the public ledger. And then you can have them talking to each other. You can even imagine private ledgers that are temporary. Like while you're playing a game, one is created during your game. And after an hour, it shuts down when your game ends. And then it talks back to the major ledger, the, the public ledger and records things. So I love this idea that we are now coming full circle and we will be able to uh, do this now under the name of Hashgraph, which is exceedingly exciting to me. I couldn't be more excited about building on the top of the vision that Mans and Lehman set for us about six years ago. I want Hashgraph in the future to be a verb. I want people to say, did you Hashgraph your application, your business model, your idea? And together as an ecosystem, I know we can do that and push the limit of what can be built with the Hashgraph technology. Thank you. Let's dive into this topic to learn more about the change. So the name change marks a significant moment for them, symbolizing a return to Hedera's roots. As many of you know, the Hashgraph consensus algorithm built by Hedera co-founder Lehman Baird has been an instrument in their journey so far. It's what sets them apart and has driven to remarkable achievements to date. The Hashgraph algorithm formed a basis for the Hedera network and Hedera Hashgraph LLC from which Swirl Labs spun out in 2022, which Lehman and Mance laid the groundwork for a public network that has since flourished. Their vision has always extended beyond that. True value creation comes from a thriving ecosystem of developers building decentralized applications for all. With Swirl Labs, the goal is clear to create an entity that supports Hedera's growth and pioneers new products and advancements within its ecosystem. Lehman and Mance have laid out an inspiring vision for what's next, what they call shared worlds, the concept and visions in Internet of Value where different DLT networks converge seamlessly, connecting traditional enterprise with DeFi. It's a vision that deeply excites them. And this is word from word from, as CEO of Hashgraph, I'm thrilled to lead the next phase of growth that we have been so proud to be one of the entities contributing to this phenomenal success within Hedera's ecosystem to date. With Hedera surpassing 50 billion transactions, fostering hundreds of DeFi and enterprise applications, and building a governing council of over 30, including many leading Fortune 100 leaders, and this is just the beginning. The market is evolving rapidly. 
demanding more interoperability, privacy, and tokenization. At Hashgraph, they're committed to evolving to meet these challenges head on. So it's fitting that our team dedicated, dedicated to innovation and commercial development now bears the name of the technology that started it all. Looking ahead, we see tremendous opportunities in real-world asset tokenization, stablecoins, and supply chain. The demand for private uses of Hashgraph is growing, especially in regulated markets where tailored solutions are crucial. While we continue to support Hedera as a general-purpose public network, our focus at Hashgraph is expanding to include private networks and specialized use cases. As we embark on this new chapter as Hashgraph, I am more than determined than ever to build upon Lehman and Mance's original vision. I envision a future where hashgraphing, an application or business, is seamless and becomes synonymous with Web3 innovation together with our expanding ecosystem. We will continue to push the boundaries of what's possible. Hello, Hashgraph. The next chapter in our journey starts now. Big news here earlier this month, Deloitte announced that they have partnered with Hedera Hashgraph. They partnered with Deloitte aiming to enhance verification of companies, ESG impact and sustainability claims. According to the announcement, this partnership aims at fighting greenwash and proper tangible impact reporting through a new tool, Environmental and Social Impact, or ESI, built on Hedera's DLT. The Deloitte ESI platform, built on Hedera Public Network, seeks to transform how companies prove their net zero and ESG claims. The platform based on blockchain technology ensures data integrity and enables the reliable verification of sustainable claims, sustainability. Aligned with the UN's Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs and various ESG frameworks, the ESI platform aids organizations in managing, monetizing, and reporting on sustainable initiatives while ensuring, com ensuring compliance with legal requirements this alignment is vital as it addresses the credibility challenges associated with companies' sustainability reports. An important feature of the ESI platform is a Hedera Guardian, which enhances the verification process. The Guardian employs tokenized quantitative outcomes to ensure transparent and immutable documentation of sustainability impacts, particularly for carbon markets. And in case you missed it, QuickNode now supports Hedera Mainnet and Testnet. What is QuickNode? QuickNode, the most powerful real-time data pipelines, eliminate the need for complex ETL pipelines and constant polling. Streams provides a continuous push-based data flow that simplifies your data ingestion process. Instant access to multiple streaming data sets. Tools to turn your raw data into your data. We focus on infrastructure so you can focus on innovation. So that gives us an idea of what it is. Okay, Hedera fans, we're going to watch an interview, clips from an interview from the blonde broker. She interviews Ty Smith from Hedera. He's going to speak on the network, Swirl Labs, which is now Hashgraph, tokenization of real world assets, karate combat on Hedera, and more. So let's go ahead and give a listen know what HGraph is and Hedera, can we do a little run through of the products for them? Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, well, how about I break down the organizations of Hedera? Yes, because that is still confusing. It's, to it me. is still confusing. Yes. And like everybody in the Hedera ecosystem likes to put H or HGraph or hash or <laughs> hashgraph. So uh, there's a lot of hashes. There's the network Hedera. It's an L1. It's a DAG. Um, it has a unique consensus algorithm called hashgraph. And that's what gives it its ability to be extremely green. Uh, it's like a very extremely low carbon output, um, extremely fast, where it's, it can do around 10,000 TPS, and that's throttled down from 100,000. So we just don't hit that, so it's throttled to 10. And three to five second to true finality of execution of, of a transaction. So um, yeah, it's, it's great tech, and that's the, the network Hedera. And then I work at Swirls Labs, which is the organization that does a lot of the open source development. Um, and there's a, just a tons of engineers that build out the open source protocol of, of Hedera. And then um, there is uh, the HBAR Foundation, which is the grant wing. So there's kind of three orgs. And then we also have the Hashgraph Association, which is another grant. 
um, system. So four orgs, all similar names, except Swirl's not. You yeah, uh, so I'm not guaranteed to go to conferences. I'm not on the, the DevRel or De DA team, a developer advocacy team. Uh, but in my role in specifically uh, running the token service or being the product manager of the token service, uh, you know, I did a I did a keynote at the Phil Brussels going over real world asset tokenization. And so Hedera is on the, the bleeding edge of how do you tokenize carbon credits? Um, we have Red Swan that's tokenizing real estate in the U.S. And how do you how do you do yeah. these really complicated uh, regulatory things and bring value uh, and why? And so since we're on the bleeding edge and kind of thought leaders in the RWA space and the carbon credit space, mm -hmm. uh, it makes sense to go to conferences and share what we've learned and how we're we're executing things and, and the momentum that we have for. And you also touched on the grants. So right now, I think a lot of we're in a we're in a builder's market right people are looking for those grants you guys are probably bringing a lot of attraction from devs out there what do those grants look like a nature of the organization split up is i'm not really involved in grants at all so unfortunately i don't have any insight into how the, That's okay. the they're just there works. they they're are there, there. Uh, reach out to the the hbar foundation or the hashcraft association uh, in their websites and then you can get um, good information on how to how to apply and, and what the tracks are also are working with karate combat yes and i want to talk about that because karate combat is built on hedera and i'm gonna let you <laughs> take over yeah um i hear you might be fighting in karate combat yes i just signed my contract nice. to fight in karate combat at token 2049 in singapore so i've been training for that very cool. I think Karate Combat is doing what we've been talking about for a long time in crypto, where you need, we can build all the technology in the planet, but if no one uses it, it doesn't matter. And so I think Karate Combat has a really easy onboarding mechanism for people who aren't necessarily even technical to have a touch point on why this is a cool, innovative new way to interact with a sport. So um, one, it, the, the Karate Combat app and the token are Hedera. So that is a Karate Combat app is a Hedera account. And um, Up Only Gaming is a really cool, interesting way on how people that are participating in the token can bet and always win, right? Yeah. So if you lose, you keep your token. If you win, you win more token. Uh, and the fighters get a portion. If they win the fight, they get a bigger bonus from the pool of people that bet on them. Yes, which and the, is, these pools are massive too, yeah, by the way. It's very cool. Um, and then uh, they actually also get to vote in DAO votes. So when we were at Consensus, I think that was the first karate where um, the rule, the five second rule was removed from a DAO vote. And so the game changes based on how people who have more of the token vote. And that's, I think it's really impactful to see that you can change the sport through participation. Um, and it's fast, it has a really quick user experience, and those are the benefits that we try to, to explain in Hedera is like, I always kind of theorize that Hedera can be the user experience layer of Web3. And this is a great example of how if you build a very big um, consumer-focused application, users don't really know they're interacting with crypto, and yep, you get exactly. all the benefits of that, that, that cryptography and like DAO votes and everything. For those at home, if you download the Karate Combat, you'll be able to see exactly what we're talking about. It's super easy to use. You make an account really quickly. And then um, you're able to see all of the past fights. Um, you're able to learn more about Up Only Gaming. You can, um, I believe, as soon as you download and create a wallet, you do get some HBAR. For transaction fees. Yeah, for yeah. transaction fees. So um, not only that, that you can purchase Karate tokens, and then you can go and vote on your favorite fighters, you'll see like the odds whenever voting opens up, who you want to bet on. And it's super cool, so hopefully you bet on me. I do wanna ask you because this is a huge buzzword over the last like six months in the crypto space. We talk about RWAs and I think a lot of people surface level understand what an RWA is, but you're actively building them. I kinda want you to do a breakdown of what what is this real world asset? What does it mean? What's the process of creating one? What classifies as an RWA? Really good question. The simplest thing is an RWA is just a token that connects to a real world asset. It, it, it is used as in place of the real world asset for trading. And it's nothing new to humans. In like 3000 BC in Mesopotamia, we had clay tokens that were sealed by like a notary and that would dictate livestock and oil. And that was a token of a real world asset. 
And so the only difference that's happening now is we're moving those from bank ledgers that are internal and like the token, a database line, yeah. and we're putting them into a decentralized system. So again, it's nothing really new. It's just moving it from an older system to a newer system. The biggest issues aren't tokenizing because we can do NFTs have been around for a long time. You know, right. Ethereum, like what, 2015? Mm -hmm. but yeah. So tokenizing is easy. The problem or the hardest part of token uh, real world tokenization is making sure that that asset is legally in that token. And if it was traded, then the ownership trades with it. Because if you're in Alabama and you bought the 28th floor of a high rise in China, and then the lease owner in China sells the entire building, what's your legal recourse? Exactly. So, so it's not, how do I tokenize the 28th floor and sell it to you? It is, how do I make sure that that's legally regulatory working correctly for you as ownership. an investor protection, making sure I'm not doing anti -mon or doing all my anti money laundering laws and my KYC. Uh, some asset classes, you have to have $150,000 before you can even access it. So okay. not just doing KYC, but doing sophisticated investor class. So a lot of the focus isn't on how do I tokenize this? And it is on how do I work with governments and regulatory agencies around the world to understand where the guardrails are and make sure that that data is on the token so that when it is being exchanged in open markets, it's legally allowed to and that the person who issues it have the right requirements like I can freeze it if it gets into an illegal state. I can um, claw it back if I need to give it back because the lease has been sold and give you money or something. So uh, that's where most of the work is. And you can look at uh, Hedera is doing a lot on trying to figure out that through the, the environmental uh, credits and the carbon credits. And then you can look at Chainlink with their CCIP where they're trying to see how do you get um, transactions across different networks to talk to each other. So if you have a token on different networks, you can move them yeah. uh, to different liquidity and, and, and different uh, jurisdictions.